Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, you can see this giant beast sitting here beside me, and in this beautiful matte black case is my computer. I built this, God, has it been four years, five years ago? And at the time, it was pretty top of the line. It was a nice machine. It had a core, what was it, an i7-4770K in there, overclocked it a little bit, originally had a uh, GTX 770 graphics card, but recently it's been showing its age, and I decided to do some upgrades. I recently put in a 1080, and that helped, but I could use a new CPU. And a new CPU also means a new motherboard, so I have some components here. I had selected a Core i7 8700K, so this is overclockable. I don't know if I will overclock or not, but I wanted to have that option. This is the 8th Gen 300 series, and along with that, I have a Asus Republic of Gamers ZE, or no, Z370E gaming motherboard. Hey, um, this isn't like super top of the line, super expensive. It's probably kind of high mid tier for a gaming motherboard. It doesn't quite have as many um, outputs as I would like on the back panel, the IO panel, but it's enough. There's some USB 3, USB 3.1. I think it'll do the job. And then I was able to pick up, my God, is RAM expensive right now, but I got 16 gigs of DDR4. This is G-Skill Rip Jaws. Um, and this is 3000 speed, I believe. And I can't remember the latency on this. It's 15 something, something, something. Uh, I don't know. We'll look this up. I eventually want to get 32 gigs, but it was just so freaking expensive right now. I think 16 at this speed will be enough. Now, this isn't going to be a super in-depth tutorial, really, but I just want to show you how I remove the old CPU, the old motherboard, and then pop the new ones in. You have to make a decision if you're going to do something like this. You have to decide if you're going to do a fresh Windows install. I probably would recommend that, but I'm not going to. I just have too many programs, too many apps, too many things on this Windows install um, that I wouldn't be able to get back. And if, if I, even if I could, it would be such a huge hassle and would take so long. So with all the research I've done, I think it's going to be okay to do this with my old Windows install. I have a product key for Windows 10 Pro. My version of Windows is not an OEM version. If you're doing this and you had a computer that you just bought at Best Buy, you probably have an OEM product key, which means that you would not be able to carry it over to a new machine because your computer is basically your motherboard as far as Windows is concerned. With me, I can carry it over. My Windows registration is associated with my Microsoft account. So once I, re, once I put in this new motherboard, new CPU, boot up the computer for the first time and go into Windows, I will be able to associate my account with this new motherboard and it should be fine hopefully. And then I also have a thumb drive with all the drivers needed for this Asus motherboard, uh, for the LAN, for, for everything. So even though Windows 10 is supposedly pretty good about finding all that stuff, I do have those drivers as backup just in case I can't get onto the internet once I install this. Um, there might be some other little issues that I might have to deal with because, as I said, it is probably better to do a fresh install of Windows. Just wipe your hard drive, start over from scratch. But I don't really want to do that. So we're going to see what happens. I mean, what could go wrong? It should be fine. Um, this computer is water cooled. I'm going to use that same water cooler. I think it has some life left in it still. Um, so I'll probably have to clean off the thermal paste from that water cooler, reinstall it in the new CPU. I'm keeping the old CPU and motherboard. I'm going to give it to a friend. They're building just a really cheap budget computer. Um, but anyway, this should work. We're going to crack this baby open. We'll pop these new parts in. And we'll see what happens. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, gang, so here she is, cracked open. And the first thing we need to do is start disconnecting everything from this motherboard. Now, this is gonna be fun. Um, I would suggest labeling everything before you do this, but I have a memory like a steel trap. And I'm going to be remember, I'm going to be able to remember where everything goes. It's gonna be perfect. So here we go. Uh, first of all, we have our graphics card here. This is my 1080. We're going to disconnect the power supply like so, hopefully. There 
You should make sure that you try to discharge any static electricity you have built up in your fingers, touch something metal, or you could wear one of those little bracelets. Um, the difficult thing about this is that it's hard to get to the tabs to actually disconnect this, but we'll try to finagle this out here and get this graphics card out of the motherboard. Okay, put this to the side very carefully. Now I'm going to remove the water cooler. And we're back and I had a hell of a time getting this <laughs> cooler heat sink off or the radiator block off or whatever you want to call it off of the actual CPU. It was ridiculous. I guess the thermal paste had just completely solidified on here and now I'm going to actually have to get some probably alcohol, rubbing alcohol on this and clean off this old thermal paste so I can put new thermal paste on when I install it onto the new CPU. All right, I've been rubbing on this thing for quite some time. You just want to make sure you get every little last bit of residue of the old thermal paste off because when you put it on the new CPU, you don't want any little bubbles. You want to be perfectly flat and tight. And I think we're pretty good. If you add dripped rubbing alcohol on this and everything to try to get the thermal paste off, it's not gonna hurt any of the components as long as it dries first. And to actually get this off, I used a Dairy Queen, where is the camera? A Dairy Queen gift card. And I basically had to jam it under where, uh, where this was attached to the CPU with the thermal paste and cram it up or pry it up with this credit card. I just couldn't budge it no matter what I did. So anyway, it's off now, we're in good shape, and now it's time to start disconnecting the other components. I've already disconnected the fan header from the motherboard. You can see the CPU's still in there. I'm just gonna leave that in the socket right now because the whole motherboard's coming out. But we'll start disconnecting other things here if I can put stuff to the side. I'm gonna leave the RAM in here now because I can't use this either. But we have uh, several things here. We have a system fan here. We have our power supply here. This is uh, USB 3 ports that go to the front of my case. So these can be disconnected. Um, and these are all my hard drives and my optical drive. So I'm hoping that when I disconnect these from the SATA, uh, let's see if I can do this, that they'll all kind of stay where they are. There's gonna, just gonna be a mass of cables everywhere. You're not going to be able to see everything I'm doing, probably. Okay, so there's all the hard drives disconnected, USB disconnected. This is connected to the, it has this Corsair link, so you can actually read the CPU temperature and everything. Um, that is going through the back and I have it routed through, so I'm gonna hopefully 
be able to pop the motherboard off um, with this not being too much in the way. These cables, power cables can be disconnected. Like so. Here's a fan header. So the cables that I'm disconnecting here, I don't know if you can see this at all, but it's the power switch, the reset switch, stuff that go to the front of the case. And hopefully I can keep all of these straight again. Most of them are labeled, so that's nice. Couple other little cables here. Okay, I just connected one more power cable and one more fan header, and I think that is everything. <clears throat> and now it's a matter of just getting all these screws on the standoffs, keeps the motherboard um, away from the surface of the case. We're gonna take all those out, and then we should be able to lift the motherboard free. All right, it's time to try to lift this baby out of here. Let's see what happens. All right, gang, there we go. There is the old motherboard removed. That always freaks people out a little bit to touch circuit boards like this. You're really not gonna damage too much. What you really have to worry about are pins and cables and things like that. As the train rumbles by, thank you so much, you stupid frickin' train. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side. We're gonna get the, other more, the new motherboard out and we'll see about the standoffs and everything. You'll see I have these standoffs here in the case. I seriously doubt they're going to match the new motherboard, but we'll see. And then I also have to remove the mounting bracket for the cooler as well. Okay, I'm looking at this new motherboard and it actually does look like all the standoffs are in the exact same places here for the motherboard, so that's nice. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to install the CPU in here. Uh, I'll put thermal paste on it after we have the entire motherboard installed into the case. Then I'll put the thermal paste, put the actual cooler on top of that. Um, I will install the RAM first before I put it in the case, and then we'll just start hooking up all the different wires, the power supply, all that good stuff. Most things are gonna be pretty much where they were on the other board. Um, you know, power supply goes here, we have fan headers, things like that all around. So hopefully this won't make, uh, well, we'll see. Hopefully it won't be too much of, uh, of an issue getting everything hooked back together. We have all our ESATA -E ports here and everything for our hard drives, which is basically where they were. Everything should be pretty much where we want them to be or where they were before. So let's get started. All right, I think I will actually just pop the motherboard in first before I put the CPU in. Since I have it on the ground, it's easy to reach. First thing we're gonna do is pop the IO panel inside or outside, whatever. Looks like it goes like this. Make sure it fits. All right, that baby's installed, so we'll be lining all our outputs from the motherboard into that. Then all the standoffs seem like they're in the right place. We need to make sure these components don't get covered up by the motherboard when we pop it inside. And I'm gonna try to place it down inside here. Here goes. All right, I've installed the mounting bracket for the cooler 
already on the back of the motherboard and now I'm just gonna pop this baby in. I'll put the CPU and everything after I have already mounted the motherboard, I guess. We just need to get it past all this nonsense, get the outputs lined up with the IO panel in the back and hopefully that will go off without a hitch. Alright gang, that's pretty much lined up. We have all our standoffs in the right place. All the screw holes match up. So now I will just put in the screws that they hopefully provided for me. Otherwise, I guess I could use the old screws that I had. Just snug them down, you don't want to over tighten them. All right, gang, the motherboard is secured to the case. Now I'm going to throw in my memory. I've got 16 gigs of DDR4 here, and I'm pretty sure they're gonna go in these two slots here, but I'll just make sure, I'll check the motherboard instruction manual and make sure that that's actually the case. Or should we do the CPU first? Maybe we'll do the CPU first. I just want to check this though and see where the DIMM is supposed to go. Okay, so with two modules, it does say to go into A2 and B2, and it looks like A2 is, uh, yeah, <laughs> look at it the right way. Yeah, A2 is here, B2 is here, so you do skip. So we'll probably do that after we do the CPU. So here is our core i7-8700K. Let's pop this baby out. There are going to be instructions which we may or may not need to read. And the actual CPU in here. Get it out of here. How the hell does this thing come out? Here we go. Ooh, fancy. And Asus has provided this little CPU installation tool. I want to see how this works. Okay, we have a yellow mark on this end here, or a triangle mark, and there should be a triangle mark on the CPU as well. Uh, yes, so those are going to be lined up. And I'm assuming I put it in upside down. I don't know why I need this, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, gang, so this little Asus CPU installation tool, I guess it's just a method of holding the CPU. Um, top of CPU installation tool. I, it seems like they want me to put it into the socket, which seems very strange. But anyway, we've got our little triangle on the corner here, and that should actually be facing down like so. And I guess I'm supposed to be holding here, which is strange according to their little instructions. Okay, so I popped the CPU installation tool with the CPU into the socket, and I guess that's supposed to stay in there. So we're going to fold this down and hopefully you'll be able to see it goes down. This little pop thing should come out. Uh, 
Okay, that is firmly in place. All right, RAM time. And we're putting them in A2 and B2. And make sure we do it the right way here. Should just slot right in. Oh shit, I just noticed one of my heat sink thingies is bent on this RAM. Hopefully that doesn't affect anything. And you should just be able to apply even pressure. And there we go. Number one and number two. Don't force it, but you should be able to easily press it in. There we go. Okay, RAM's installed. So now the next thing will be thermal paste on top of the CPU. We will put the actual cooler header, or what is that? The, the radiator, the block, I guess, on top. We'll crank that down. And then it's just a matter of connecting cables popping the whole thing back together and turning it on and seeing what happens. All right, we have a little bit of Arctic Silver thermal paste. Ah, it's leaking out at me, damn it. <laughs> we wipe this off, lovely. You're supposed to get about a P size, between a BB size and P sized spot. And we're just gonna put it right on the middle. That's probably enough. And we will place this down. Let's make sure we don't have the header cable in the way. Actually, let me get my bracket first. This is magnetic. That way we can be lined up properly. Pop it on. It's sliding all over. And then you want to tighten each side from the opposite of each other. So we tighten this one first. And this one. This one, and this one. Now this has to go to the pump header on the motherboard. I'll have to look on the actual instructions to see which one that is. This baby, uh, let's see, we've got a big tangle of wires here. Okay, so I already, here's a fan. Okay, this goes into the cooler block here, somewhere. Why can't I see it? There we go. This goes into the actual pump header on the motherboard, so I'm gonna have to look to see exactly where that is. We have our eight pin connector here, which can plug right into this in the motherboard, if I can find it. All right, that's in there. And now I'm just gonna start connecting every single frickin' wire. I'm gonna have to look some of the things up in the instructions for the motherboard, make sure I'm putting, you know, like my audio for my back panel is in the right thing. It's all a little different, um, but for the most part, I should be able to figure it all out. I will install my graphics card, all that stuff, things that aren't really that interesting, you don't really need to see. I guess we could put our giant power connector in here right now, maybe. Now my radiator's in the way. Yay, look, there's power to my motherboard. Yay. And we've got fan headers and all sorts of things that we're gonna have to plug in. So I will do that and then we will reconvene. Oh, well gang, I think that's everything. I've got power connected to the motherboard. I've got all my fan headers connected. I've got USB and all that good stuff connected. Actually, this is starting to come out. 
goes to my front panel. I've got my other front panel things here, the power switch, the LED for the power, all that good stuff. I've got USB to micro USB to my actual pump here for my cooler. I think I've got everything connected. Everything is ready. It's time to pop this back or put the panels back together, or maybe I'll leave them off actually, just to make sure I'll plug everything in first and see if it works. And uh, I guess we'll reconvene and I'll let you know how it all went. I have as many um, outputs as I would like on the back panel, the IO panel. Oh, hello. Well, as you can see, it did work. I was able to put everything back together, plug everything back in, turn on the computer and it booted. It worked. Um, I was able to go into the BIOS, I changed the uh, frequency for my RAM, got it up to 3000, all that went well. It recognized Windows. The one issue I had, or actually two issues I had, uh, number one, I have three extra, three extra storage hard drives. I have a solid state drive, which uh, has my operating system and all that and all my programs, and then I have three storage drives, and then I have an optical drive too, a Blu-ray drive. And when I plugged everything in, my motherboard recognized my optical drive and my boot drive, my solid state drive, but it did not recognize any of my storage drives. And I was going crazy for hours trying to figure out why that was. Um, and it turns out they just weren't getting any power, but as I had routed all my cables previously, when I had first built my computer, um, it was just this big mass of cables that were routed through the case and I could not figure out where they weren't getting power from, like what wasn't connected. So it took me a while to diagnose that. I thought maybe there was just an issue with the firmware for the uh, motherboard or something, but I finally got that fixed. All my hard drives were recognized. Number two, which uh, was kind of a hassle, was the fact that my Windows install was not activated. Everything went fine in terms of Windows recognizing the drivers for the motherboard, installing what it needed, and then I downloaded other drivers, installed those, updated everything. All that went completely smoothly, but uh, it would not activate my Windows installation based on the old key that I had. And I had to go through, I think it was three hours with a kind gentleman in India through Microsoft customer support and basically just prove to them that I had had a Windows install and that it belonged to me. Even though I had checked everything, supposedly my license key was associated with my Microsoft account. Everything should have been fine. For some reason, it didn't go through and he had to actually just end up giving me an entirely new key for Windows 10 Pro. But eventually it worked and uh, now, hey, as you can see, my computer's working great. I did a couple benchmarks. I'm not gonna throw numbers at you because it doesn't really matter. But when I had benchmarked before with my old system, um, I can't remember where I was. I did PC mark and 3D mark um, <clears throat> and was sort of like high middle of the pack when you can compare your scores against other people's scores online. And now when I did, uh, I think 3D mark for gaming, I was like in the 89th percentile and PC mark for just general computing, I was in the 94th or 95th percentile. So it's a good system, it's running well so far, everything's great. So there you go. This just goes to show you that you can do something like this on your own. Don't, well, I was gonna say you don't necessarily have to go to a professional. If you want to, go ahead. If you don't wanna go, go through the hassle because it did take quite a while. But basically, you can figure this stuff out. There are always tutorials online. You can always look anything up for the most part. Just do your research. Don't be intimidated. I know it's a computer. I know it seems complicated. And in many ways, yes, it is kind of complicated. But uh, you can do it. It's not that hard. I built the damn thing myself. I upgraded it myself. And I'm a moron. So I think you could do it too. So thank you guys so much for watching this. Probably long, probably kind of interminable, maybe kind of boring, but hopefully somewhat interesting for some of you video on Stuff and Things. I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Now back to editing. <laughs> but.